Hi, I'm Harry Rock, and welcome to another edition of Westfield Council on Aging Presents. This is a special collaborative effort with Tina Gorman, Executive Director of the Westfield Senior Center, and Pete Coles, who is the producer and manager of WCPC Westfield Cable Channel 15. Today's guest is Beth Cardillo, and we're going to be discussing Alzheimer's. Is it dementia? or normal aging, which I think is going to be a fascinating show. Beth is the current executive director of Armbrook Village and has been there since 2012. Before that, she was the executive director of Keystone Commons, and she has been on the adjunct faculty of Western New England University. She's currently a member of the Bay State Community faculty, so we'll hear a little bit about that. And uh, a couple of nice little, uh, I always like to get little interesting tidbits about our guest. She was the 2020 Professional Woman of the Year and was uh, honored as such by the Springfield Chamber of Commerce. That is not yet publicized, but that's coming up. So it we've, is. we've got the inside scoop. You do. And uh, she was also the 2019 Friends of the Alzheimer's Association honoree, honoree of the year. And then also the Western New England University 2016 social, uh, social Worker of the Year, which is pretty significant. So, Beth, I'm excited to have you in the show, uh, in the studio here. I'm uh, unfortunately of the age where I'm starting to think about Alzheimer's, or as I call it, Youngheimer's. I'm convinced I have a case of Youngheimer's because I put my keys down. I can't remember where they are. I'll be searching for something, and then I look down, and there it is in my hand. Uh, you know, it's just some of the crazy little things that happen uh, in our lives as we start to age. And I, I find that uh, having gotten into the 60s, that's when it's all happening. But we will be talking about dementia and is it dementia or is it normal aging? And what exactly is dementia? What are the precursors to dementia? And where can you get help if you think a loved one is showing signs of it? So I think it's going to be a really interesting topic. So let's jump right into it. Uh, a little bit about your background. How did you get interested in this field and uh, where did that all come so, from? So I'm not one of those people that kind of planned my life. I think we fall into things by accident. <laughs> um, and I've worked in Westfield most of my life, but I actually worked in traumatic brain injury for many years. I worked at Western Mass Hospital. Wow. I started the first state-funded head injury program in the country in Westfield. Who would have thought? And so I worked with a lot of young people that um, – were in car accidents and had all sorts of difficulties because of their brain injuries, and that brought on a whole host of issues. So after doing that for about 12 years, I somehow ended up working with the elderly population in retirement communities, and I started realizing that there wasn't that much difference in working with the elderly with the dementia as it was working with young people with traumatic brain injury. Mm. So a lot of the same issues with frontal lobe injuries and things that elders have, there's quite um, significant correlations or um, in things in common. So I guess I would say I just love the brain. I find the brain fascinating. It is amazing. And... Um, the more I started, I did the marketing at Glen Meadow Retirement for a while, um, working with people to move into Glen Meadow and started learning more about dementia and just find it fascinating and just kind of moved in that direction. Wow, that's really interesting. Well, let's jump right into it. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that people sometimes, I mean, as we get older, uh, you know, it's funny, it's in different stages of life, you focus on different things. Um, you know, when I was in my late 30s, early 40s, I was starting to focus on, I'm losing my hair. Oh, no, I'm losing my hair. You know, it's those kinds of things. But now that we're into our 60s or older, you worry about dementia and losing your mind and you, losing your ability to interact with others. Um, so what is the difference between dementia and just normal aging? All right. So... Um it is interesting because I'm right at your age, probably, Harry. I may be a little bit older than you, but still in my 60s. And I think all of us do things as we get older that we do second guess. 
can't find your keys, right? Um, you walk into a room, you don't know why the heck you walked into the room, <laughs> and you look at the room and you go, why am, why am I in here? And then you turn around and walk out, and as soon as you start walking out, you go, oh yeah, I was getting um, the book that I left on the couch. We just do that. We also forget words and oh. things that are on the tip of our tongue. So I always laugh. I, you know, I said to my son one day, I couldn't think of the word pen. And I said, Max, can you do me a favor? I need a, um, um, a writing implement. And he looked at me like, what are you nuts? A writing implement, you know, something to write with. Sometimes I feel like I'm playing charades. Exactly, because I can't the come thingamajig up with the and this and that and this and, and that. Yeah. Absolutely. So we all do that. My girlfriend had told her son once to put it, when he came up from college, to put his dirty laundry into the appliance in the basement. <laughs> so the appliance in it's the in the basement right instead of washing machine so we all do that but we all are smart enough to think if you can't come up with the word describe the word and that's what speech therapists will tell people that have had strokes that have word finding issues and aphasia if you can't think of the word try to describe what you're looking for so a writing implement could have been a pen or a pencil <laughs> right the washing appliance was probably the washing machine. So those are things that we all do. Uh, running into people that you're not sure why you know them or where you know them from, but they look familiar. That happens to me a lot in the grocery store. Yep. Some woman I saw, she said, hey, Beth, how are you? I said, fine, and I'm great at just going with it and thinking, who the heck is that person? Well, this turned out... She was a woman that actually works in my building, but is only there on Sundays oh. at the front desk. So I'm usually not there. She didn't have on like right. work. She had something. So it threw me it's for a loop. Context. So I just kind of right. kept going with it. It's great to see you. Yeah, bye. And then I ran into her at work and I said, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. It was you that I ran into at the grocery store. Right. And somebody ran into me recently at Kohl's and I said, hi, how are you? And she said, hi. And I said, she has no idea who I am. I know it. And about five minutes later, we were both in the linen department, and she looked at me. She goes, I can't believe it, Beth. I didn't know it was you. I said, I know you didn't. I was going to find you <laughs> and say, it's me. Um, but that happens. That happens to all of us. Um, and if you know a lot of people and you get older, you got more people, right? If I go to conferences, I have to sit and kind of quietly try to look at their name tag to see oh, who they are. Absolutely. And because I'm not sure, I know a lot of people. So that's normal. That is totally normal. And usually you can think of the person's name at three in the morning. Oh, yeah, that was so and so. It is brutal. I will run into someone and I just can't come up with the name. Yep. And then I think I've got the right name and I'm saying, you know what, Harry? You better not use it because I you're not be wrong. totally certain. Yeah. And, hey, oh, hi, how are you? It's so nice to see you again. Did you ever call someone on the phone and you were put on hold and you're, like, waiting for so long you don't remember who you called? Yeah. Right? So those are, like, normal things. We all do that. I know a lot of couples make deals with each other. So if I don't know their name, I'm going to introduce you, and then you say, and you are... Because right. I can't come up with the other person. I tell my name. wife that all the time. Right? She says, "Why didn't you introduce me?" I said, "Because I, I didn't know who exactly, they were." Exactly. So now we, I, I tell her, I said, "Ann, I said, if I'm not introducing exactly. you, it means I'm not that's, coming up with their name." Yeah, it's when the both you of you get to stuck. step up and right. introduce yourself. That's the or, kind of deal that my husband and I have as right. well. So. Um, oh my God! I feel like you live in my house. Well, this is, <laughs> this is the age we are, and this is normal. And I suspect I don't know how old you are. I'm, I'm 68. I'm 68. And, okay, so we're the same. We should be experiencing the same things, and it sounds like we are. Yep. So those are all pretty normal things. Mm -hmm. That you know, when you lose something, most of us can retrace our step, steps, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't find my keys, but I drove home, so I gotta have them. They gotta be in the house somewhere. They're not in my pocket. What was I doing when I got home? I was walking in with the groceries. Oh right. Oh, I wonder if they dropped in the grocery bag. Look in the grocery bag. Here they are. Mm. So we have that ability to retrace. It's when you have absolutely no idea what you did. Or I always say, if you can't find your keys and then you find them and look at them and say, I have no idea what these 
keys are for, okay. then that's a problem. Okay. So we're all, we all trace things. We all trace our steps and this and that. That's, that's pretty common. I couldn't find my sunglasses the other day, and women have a problem of changing their pocketbooks all the time. Mm. And I went from one bag, the blue bag, to the gray bag, to the red <laughs> bag. I've got extra sunglasses, but no, those aren't the ones I want. Yes, I found them. Um, so that's normal. Okay. But let, let me talk about what the signs are when it's not normal. So yeah. we've now decided that both Harry and I are somewhat normal. <laughs> Maybe not normal in other things that we do, but we think we're okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have that reinforcement. So, so far, we're good. Right. All right. So we're talking about changes in planning or solving problems and maybe it's something that normally you would be able to figure out how to get from point a to point b you look on MapQuest, you do it on your phone um you've been there before you write out a map whatever it is but all of a sudden i don't know how to get there and i can't figure out how to get there mm. and what used to be easy for me is not easy and you hear about people they got lost two miles from home. And you're like, how could that be? Mm. Because all of a sudden, the landscape doesn't look familiar. Mm. And that's kind of scary. Like, okay, this doesn't look familiar. And I can tell you so many stories of people that I've talked with, families. My parents were going to the Cape, and they got on 95 in the wrong direction. They ended up in Maine. Oh, no. And got a call five hours later. Um, my girlfriend tells the story when her husband's aunts, one of them ended up in the hospital, and they got a call that she was at Providence. So the other two aunts got in the car to go see her, and they got a call hours later because they weren't at Providence Hospital in Holyoke. They happened to be in Providence, Rhode Island. They cannot even figure out to this day how that happened and how they ended up in Providence. <laughs> they I, they must have gotten on the Mass Pike, seen a sign, I don't know, didn't say, gee, we've been driving for a really long time. Right. It's usually a 20-minute ride. Right. So those things happen. Um, hmm. So um, so problem solving, not knowing, um, not being able to complete familiar tasks, cooking. Um, gee, I always know how to... Um, make a turkey all of a sudden what am i supposed to do with this bag that's inside the turkey do i take this stuff out of the bag do i just throw it away what is this stuff and i don't know if you've seen the movie or read the book still alice by lisa genova she um she's a great writer she wrote a book about a woman who was a, a linguistic specialist and started to get early onset alzheimer's and she nailed it the book is phenomenal and she talks, there's a part in the book, it was Julianne uh, Moore, and she got, a, I think, an Oscar for it, or an Emmy, whichever it is. And um, she had her cheat sheets. The whole family was coming for Thanksgiving, and she had to keep looking back to look at the recipes, things that she's made all of her life. She just couldn't do it anymore. Mm. And then when I tell that story, people say, oh, my God, did you ever have people coming for dinner, and you realize after they leave, Oh, I never took the string beans out, <sighs> or I never I had this other dessert. I never did that. That's all normal stuff. But it's stuff that you do every day that all of a sudden looks, I'm having a hard time doing this. Mm. And it could be something with the car, going somewhere. It could be cooking. It could be picking up a book and saying, God, I thought I read, I don't remember reading this. Um, none of this looks familiar. You kind of get lost in things. Um, not being able to look at the newspaper and remember what they're reading. So those are kind of familiar tasks. Even knowing the steps of um, boiling water, leaving the kettle on, walking out of the room. Hmm. So somebody said to me recently, my mom hmm. leaves the stove on about once or twice a week. That's not normal. And this, she said, that's normal. This was at a support group, and everybody jumped on this poor woman and said, oh, my God, that is not normal. Now, have I ever left the stove on? Yes, maybe once or twice, mm -hmm. in, in even in the last year, I think. Um, but it's when you start doing those things often. Mm -hmm. um, people leaving the water on in the sink, 
the shower and not realizing it, and then you have flooded all the way downstairs. So it's kind of like you're not completing the loop, right? You're just not finishing it. Is there any particular age where this all starts happening, or is it? So the most common age is our age. Um, early onset is a little bit younger. You're going to be very surprised to hear a couple of things. There are people that have been diagnosed in their teens, in really? their 20s. What? But why is that? Because they have chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's taken me a long time to get that word out. <laughs> um, I won't try to sports that. sports injuries, and we know all about the whole thing with the NFL yeah, and with football, football helmets. Sure. So young kids that have been playing football since they were in middle school, high school, college, their brain is a mess. So there are people in their twenties. Oh. Um, and there are um, football players that have decided to, to leave, right? Because they've yeah. done autopsies on football players that have died and have seen that their brain looks like an 85-year-old person um, with Alzheimer's. So, Harry, people like you are lucky because you have something called an intellectual reserve. I'm assuming that you're a bright guy. Well, thank you. So you can fake it a lot longer than other people. Hmm. And people that have had higher education, they can fake it a little bit longer. And they can recognize that there are some problems. So what people often do that are our age, hide it a little bit more. But one of the ways they hide it is stop doing things with people so nobody will notice. But then they're noticing that you're not there. So they know something's wrong anyway. But, um, yeah, we, it's just it's interesting. It's fascinating. Um, so confusion also with time or place. It's supposed to meet someone at 3, and you got the wrong day, the wrong time, the wrong place, whatever. That happens. I mean, and we all know to write things down. And since COVID, I'm now experimenting not having an appointment book, and I'm using my phone for all my calendar appointments. And I'm not sure it's going so great yet. It's <laughs> taken me a while. I haven't missed anything yet, but it's, well, I, that's opened I, up a whole new world for me. My phone is my Bible. Yeah, I so think. that's becoming my Bible, and that's, right. that's new. So looking at appointments, and um, we have some people that live in our building that have – their memory's not bad. The biggest issue they have is time. And they'll call their daughter at 2.30 in the morning. Oh. Uh, we have an appointment at 3 o'clock this afternoon. How come you're not here to pick me up? Oh, so the wrong 2.30. It's the wrong 2.30. That's only right twice a day, right? And they got the wrong one. Oh. And the daughter will say, Mom, it's 2.30 in the morning. Look outside. But that has no bearing on what they're mm. feeling it's 2 30 you're supposed to pick me up mm. so i have a few people that they're in the dining room hours before they're supposed to eat mm. so their time is a little bit a little bit skewed mm. so as i'm talking about these things you can all take in the fact that no i don't do any of this i may you know i may do something minor as we've talked about the, the things that we all do at our age but this this brings it on a whole different level um, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships. This is kind of interesting. People with Alzheimer's, if there was a black throw rug in their living room, they may think it's a hole. A hole? A hole in the ground. They can't visualize where something starts and where something stops. And they're not yeah. looking at figure ground that something is flat on the ground. So they're seeing a hole. Oh, wow. Wow. So, I mean, it's, right? It's kind of fascinating. Um, looking at signs and not being able to understand them, the red stop sign. Hmm. So visual images are difficult. And then problems with words or speaking words or writing words. And that starts with, and we all say when we can't remember the thingamajig, but we're talking about people really getting kind of word salad. So the words are coming out wrong. 
the the blah 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 um they can start the sentence but sometimes they can't finish it and they can't come up with the word um i've heard some people say it's like they can't bring up the file it's they open the file cabinet and the file's not there yeah i think it may go one step further i think they can't even find the cabinet um so and different Parts of the brain do different things with language, whether it's hearing language, speaking language, seeing language. So not everybody with Alzheimer's has the same language deficits. I may be able to read great, but I can't say anything. Or maybe I'm speaking great, but I can't read these words. Mm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit different. Um, not being able to write check, checks anymore, um, not being able to take care of things that you've always been able to do budget um write your bills out whatever can't do it anymore and often the family takes over those roles we talked about misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace steps and every time i read that i think of these two women that lived at our place in at keystone commons two sisters god they were so cute they were both had dementia. They probably got phone calls. Or we did daily that they left their pocketbook, pocketbooks, purses in various places all over Ludlow. It was at the ATM machine. It was at this place, and everyone knew them. Um, but one of the things that they used to do when they would drive to the end of our driveway, and it was there was a big hill coming down, they couldn't see well. They would get out of the car and look to see if a car was coming, and then, and then get back in their car. By that time, three Mack trucks can be approaching oh, you. Yeah, absolutely. And that was the point where, and they didn't have any family, and we really had to get involved and get that license away. Um, decreased a poor judgment. So I'd say, in that sense, for these two sisters, that judgment wasn't too good to get out of the yeah, car, right? Right. Um, but really making... Um, you know, there was a woman I know that left where she she got into a fight with her daughter at two o'clock in the morning. She left the house and it was raining out and was walking to a hotel in Westfield hmm. and the police picked her up and um, that was not good. So the judgment in her mind was, I'm mad, I'm leaving, not it's two in the morning, it's dark out. There aren't street lights out in this part of, of town. I don't have a raincoat with me. It's raining. Where am I going to go? Mm. So in her mind, it all made sense. Mm -hmm. So that poor judgment. And then withdrawal from social activities, which I touched on a little bit. One of my friends tells me about her grandmother who used to play in a card games every week with her friends and family. And she stopped going to the games. And Julie said, Graham, how come you don't go um, to your card games anymore? Oh, they changed the rules. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to play. Translation, I can't keep up with it anymore. It's too difficult. So I'm just going to make an excuse. And then another um, thing we look at is really changes in mood and personality. You know, my mom was cool, calm, collected. She's irritable she's anxious she's depressed she's arguing with me a lot um things like that and and also where the changes happen within seconds so you don't really know what you're going to get right okay. so quick mood i guess mood swings okay so this whole list is a lot different than i just can't find that particular word these are really hardcore things that are changing your life which is stopping you from living safely mm. hmm. right leaving the stove on walking out of your house at three in the morning um thinking that your parents are still alive and you're walking to the house that you grew up in and leave the house because as as alzheimer's progresses you start going back in time so we've had people that don't know who their husband is, but they remember husband number one. So that's a little embarrassing. Um, oh, yeah. Right? Or they start looking at 
You know, we have people that every day they say, oh, my mother's pick. they're 90 years old. My mom's picking them up to go into town. We're going to take the bus. And we'll say, well, you know what? When she gets here, we'll let you know. So why don't you come with us and join this activity? Okay. Because it's pretty real to them. Hmm. And um, you don't want to, I guess a tidbit of wisdom is you never want to get into an argument with somebody who's going through this because you're not going to win and either are they and it's going to be frustrating as all get out. Hmm. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. It's just, no one's going to win, and the frustration level is going to get more and more. Have they? Is there any science? I, I know they're doing a lot of research on this, but have they found anything yet that shows what the triggers are and and who might be predisposed versus those who aren't? Um, yes, and yes. So they also say that dementia can show up 20, 10, 15 years before it even really comes out that it's already in your brain. So that's a little scary. So what happens scientifically is that your brain has a bunch of, I was able to say encephalopathy. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to say fibrillarily. I can never say that. Right. There are tangles in your brain right. that get more tangled up. They're called amyloid tangles and plaques and the plaques get thicker and thicker so it's like trying to make a phone call to san francisco during a storm and you can't get the connection and that's what happens to the brain and it happens in different places when my grandparents were older the word alzheimer's wasn't there it was senile it was hardening of the right, arteries right. that's what we talked about they had hardening of the arteries yeah, right. and that's really that. was it was the plaque getting thicker and thicker so those connections can't get through um so that's what happens in the brain and um it gets if i had a picture of it it would be the difference between looking at an image in the brain of a lot of clarity and just able to see it very clear 2020 vision and if you look at somebody with alzheimer's their brain is going to look very cloudy and blurry it loses that clarity and focus because there is so much stuff around the protein of the nucleus in the brain hmm. i'm not a scientist so i can't right. get much more scientific than that but basically that's that's what happens. So if you look at who are the people that get Alzheimer's or dementia, and I'm using the word loosely either way, let me just clarify something if I may. Um, there are, well, Harry, I'll ask you, guess how many types of Alzheimer's or dementia there are? Well, clearly there's more than one, and I just thought there was one. <laughs> <laughs> so there's 101. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, 101 types of dementia. Oh, my gosh. And God. so wow. dementia is the umbrella, okay. and there's 101 spokes coming out of that. But you hear about Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's accounts for 75%. So that's the big one. Everyone hears Alzheimer's, so Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is just one One type of dementia. Of Okay. That's so it's not Alzheimer's you have, it's dementia. Dementia and Alzheimer's is one of the types. Okay. So if you're someone that had a heart attack or a stroke, you may have vascular dementia. So your vascular system is compromised. It shrinks a little bit. It clogs up a little bit. So not enough oxygen and blood is getting into the brain. So that may cause some vascular dementia. So there's lots of types. Um, is it hereditary? It's hereditary? I, you're reading my mind. It is okay. not, for the most part, it's not hereditary. Okay. And it's brought on by a gene called APOE. I don't even I don't know what it stands for. And it is hereditary when it's early onset Alzheimer's. So if somebody gets Alzheimer's when they're in their 60s, chances are their mom probably had it with their dad. Mm. Normal dementia really doesn't happen till later on. I mean, there are people that get it at 65 and 70 and 75, but you most see it in older people. Mm. And what contributes to it? What are our eating habits? So I think diet makes a big a big difference and certainly there's lots of the mediterranean diet is really good for us and there's a lots of olive oil and lots of herbs that are really help 
um, decrease inflammation in our body and inflammation in our brain, hmm. which could be a big help. Um, having chronic comorbidities, diabetes, which they're saying is the next form of, of dementia, um, obesity. And, you know, no, the rest of them are things that you hear about good health for everybody. People that are sedentary, not healthy. People that are abusing alcohol, not mm -hmm. healthy. Right. So it's everything that you do in excess. People that aren't exercising, and they say that, um, you know, a good exercise, and I'm forgetting the word, um, where you're doing aerobic exercise mm -hmm. is is really helpful. Cardiovascular. Cardiovascular exercise. Um, um, even strength training is good for you. Um, any, you know, I think any movement is better than no movement, right? Right. right. Um, exercise helps your balance. Um, your balance helps you from not falling. Mm. Falling can contribute to dementia. If you have a precursor and you f you have a number of falls, you're going to tend to get more confused. Mm. They all they all relate to each other on some level. Um, so I think taking care of ourselves is probably the best thing we can do. Um, I worry about kids that are playing video games all the time. Oh, right. Interesting. And not moving around. Um, I think I, it'd be interesting to see what that looks like because I think there's been a big change in young people's habits. Mm -hmm. No question. So. Uh, this is a screen-dominated um, age or, or generation, right? I should say. You know, I can remember ones. when my son was, I don't know, 12 or 13, and some kid was at our house, and he goes, hey, you going to be home tomorrow? He goes, yeah, great. Um, let's play video games together virtually. So that was like, it was an invitation. You stay at your house, you stay oh. at your house, and, and we'll play. It was like, what happened to, why don't you just come on over and we'll right. ride our bikes together or whatever. That right. kind of just ended. Right. Um, so, you know, that's what we look at. And we look at people that have more than one comorbidity. I mean, if you've had a heart attack or if you have heart disease, that's not going to help, right? So we want to stay as healthy as we can. Hmm. So are there medications? Uh, what's out there right yep. now that if you get diagnosed... So I guess the question, let's back it up. How, how do, do you, you get, get how do you get diagnosed? I've been and reading your what mind. What are the treatments yep. and uh, right. so options beyond that? And if family members are noticing, you know, mom's just not quite right. She's been confused lately. She's been calling me on the wrong days or whatever. So the first thing is to go to your doc. And your doc will probably do a mini mental status exam, which is 10 minutes you know, spelled world backwards, count um, from 100 to 1 um, by 7s, um, draw a clock for me. Those are really easy things, mm -hmm. um, some simple directions. And if they say, yeah, you're not, you know, maybe we should take this further, um, you may want to, the next step would be to see probably a neurologist. Um, they may do a CAT scan. And then the next thing would be to go for a neuropsychological examination, which could be three or four hours or two days of testing. Um, it's a pretty long, lots of things to do, manipulating tiles and doing that and spelling and reading and listening to stories and trying to recount what they said in the story or what was that list of words that I gave you 10 minutes ago. And if we all remember that... Um, our president of the United States just took a test for Alzheimer's and certainly told everyone how well he did. <laughs> As well he should, right? Um, so those are the things. And then once that happens, then what do you do with that? Um, and, you know, we can get a man to the moon, but we have not been able to figure out how to how to make Alzheimer's go away. Mm. Um, and there are some medications out, and there is nothing out there that will cure it. Um, mm. There are medications that will help stop the progression for a short time, like Aricept and Namenda, Exelon. Those are kind of the big three. Um, they also have some of them icky side effects with their stomach and this and that. So it may slow the progression down 
possibly. And then after a while, they say it probably doesn't do any good. But the last um, research that I had read suggests that even if you think it's not doing that good, if you stop it entirely, you'll definitely see a downslope. Okay. So you should probably stay on it for as long as you can tolerate it. You know, I've had a few friends of mine uh, who were older at the time whose, in most cases, it was their wives. Um, I have not run into any couples that I personally know where it was the the man who had the issue. Um, it was always the woman who had the more issue. More common. Is it really? Yeah, it is. It's more common in women? I, and I don't know why. You know, I think we're just, maybe we were so good at multitasking. I, I don't know. Now we is can't do anything. Is there a percentage anything. out there? I, I don't know what it is offhand, but, but it's but definitely. But it definitely is more prone to And if you women. look at all the memory care facilities that are around, I can tell you in our own 25 people, there's probably three men and 22 women. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, hmm. So, and I can tell you, so here are some statistics. Someone develops Alzheimer's every 68 seconds. Wow, that's scary. Five million Americans affected, and the number expected to to decrease in 2050 um, to a a much, much higher, because people are living longer, and all of us baby boomers... It's us, right? So we're all getting older by the by the second, right? Um, so that's kind of a scary a, a scary statistic. And for whatever reason, in the greater Springfield area, 16.9% of residents over age 65 are living with the diagnosis of Alzheimer's or other dementia. And the national average is 13.6. 16% here in Springfield. Yeah, almost 17%. Pioneer Valley, wow. So, but I think the reason for that is, and I think if you looked at other big cities, cities are going to have higher statistics because you have more people in um, impoverished areas, impoverished areas that are not eating well and that okay. are not exercising. Uh, and are not as well educated. So, uh, so diet. It's interesting. So diet and exercise definitely play a part in this. Yep. Um, are there different levels of severity? So, so there's if, different stages. Okay. Right, so there's mild dementia. And actually before that, it's called mild cognitive impairment, which is MCI. And it's the precursor to dementia. You could have MCI and never go any further. Oh, okay. Some people, that's just kind of where it is. So it's there's no guarantee that everybody no. progresses. It, it most often does, but it could also not. And then there's earlier stage, mid-stage, and late stage is you really can't be left at all, alone at all. You're not safe. You know, safety issues right. are a big thing. Um, you can't use silverware. You don't, you're eating finger foods. Mm-hmm. Um, you're really kind of at the end and usually when people pass from alzheimer's or other dementias it's usually from pneumonia because they lose the ability to swallow so and they get aspiration pneumonia really wow interesting huh so and i want to just mention a couple of other things um i talked about there are 101 different dementias um one of them is called lewy body and it's named after Dr. Louie. And um, it has to do with the clumps of protein outside the cell. And this is what I find so amazing about the brain. It causes people to hallucinate. And usually the hallucinations are about children hmm. in their house, sitting on the bed. Hmm. So when somebody comes in and I talk to a family and they say, oh, it's the weirdest thing. My mother doesn't want to leave the house because there are three girls sitting on the couch in her bedroom. And I said she probably has Lewy body dementia. Hmm. Um, usually they're nice. They're good hallucinations. Sometimes not, but most of the time they are. But as soon as I hear that, I, I know that's probably what it is. Hmm. What it is in your brain and your chemicals and pieces of protein, 
that causes that to happen is the most fascinating thing I could think of. Yeah. I mean, why? Right? Yeah, right. Why? Um, there is um, a, a dementia that's called Wernicke Korsakoff's. It's caused by alcohol. That can sometimes be reversed, but usually by that time it's pretty far gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a host of temporal lobe dementia, um, just so many. Hmm. And it's not unusual to have more than one. For people who live by themselves, of which there are plenty, um, will they recognize the signs themselves, or is it usually an, a second party in the room or living with them or a, a, you know, a spouse that recognizes it? That's a really good question. I think for some people that are, if I started noticing, I would know if I had signs, um, I think, because I know what to look for. And uh, um, with the average person, they may. Right at the beginning, gee, I'm having a hard time. I can't believe I got lost on the way to the grocery store. What the heck mm -hmm. was going on? I wrote this check wrong. The bank had to call me. Um, I can't believe I went over to my friend's house on the wrong day. And so maybe after a couple of those, you may be saying, hmm, something going on. Or other cases where a spouse notices it and the other spouse says, you are crazy. There is nothing wrong with me. And I don't know if I would call that denial because I think they probably don't think there is something wrong mm. with them. Um, so those are hard conversations to have. And I think it's always much better if the doctor is the one that says it, get you off the hook, right? So this is what we're seeing. Um, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Hmm. What support agencies, organizations, uh, groups are out there for people to access? So the Alzheimer's Association is probably the biggest one that's around. Okay. Um, and they provide, well, a lot of the money that goes to the Alzheimer's Walk and things that they do go to research but they do, they have um, consultant programs where people can call them and talk to the family members, give them resources. They can refer them or give them names of neuropsychologists or um, neurologists, um, support groups. So I've been running a support group for nine years in Westfield. Um, it's the last Wednesday of every month. It used to be at Armbrook Village with a nice light dinner. And now it's in the comfort of your own living room um, oh, yeah. every month, and which has been great because now we're getting family members that live across the country that can now join us. Oh, sure. And we've been, we have anywhere from 10 to 25 people oh, wow. on any given month. And I facilitate the meeting, but they're the ones that are doing all the talking, right? This happened to my husband. This is what we did. And where are you at? And um, it's a very welcoming group. And um, a lot of them have become good friends, and they're really a source of support for each other. Hmm. <coughs> so I'm guessing that if, if people just go to the Alzheimer's Association, uh, if they just Google Alzheimer's or dementia, I should say really more dementia, on the internet they can find information sure and i can tell you the alzheimer's association is seven eight seven one 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 three give that one one more seven time. eight seven one 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 three and just to make sure <laughs> that I'm 100% right. You're going to check it yourself. I am, because the last thing I would want is yeah, the I person that's talking oh. about dementia <laughs> to give you all the wrong phone number. Yeah. Um, now, while you're looking for it, you know, so far I think that I'm just showing early signs of aging when I forget things. I, I don't feel like I'm doing any of this. Um, is there a chance that I could exhibit all dementia later on? I suppose anybody could. Um, it is. I was correct. Seven eight seven one 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 three. And I also want to throw out, if I can, Harry, my phone number at Armbrook Village. If people are interested oh, in the support right, groups, right. this is the easiest number you'll ever remember: five six eight. Zero, 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 zero. That's a good number. That is a good one to have, right? Wow. And you could ask for Beth, and I'll put you on our list, and uh, you'll get a Zoom invite for our support group. That's great. Um, so will you get it? 
probably not. You seem to be in reasonably good health, <laughs> right? But we don't know. We don't know. Right. We really don't know. If you, you know, there are people that are probably never smoked, never drank, eat great food, and what happens? They get it. So there's always that. But I right. know the better we do to keep ourselves um, healthy, the better our chances are. Brain exercises just using your brain and part of the problem of retiring is that you really don't problem solve to the degree that you once did uh, critical thinking the uh, brain activity really slows down i'm always worried about that my wife is constantly doing crossword, crossword puzzles, puzzles and things of this she's always using her brain yeah that way. so i think for a lot of us the idea of retirement scares the heck of us for me i, I don't know I, I don't see it happening soon but um I think that's right. Our brain, and I think everybody needs a purpose. And when we retire, and not that you have to have a plan, but if you don't have any hobbies or you're not thinking of volunteering, what are you going to do to keep that brain sharp? Mm. Um, so like your wife, you know, crossword puzzles, so do go. I just discovered the New York Times spelling bee, and I'm having so much fun with it. Oh, wow. It's a bunch of letters that you have to use them to make words, but one of the letters always has to be in there. And then the bonus is if you get all seven letters in a word. And I'm I've sort of got, like Scrabble. Yeah, I've kind of got genius. I've been getting genius for a while now, <laughs> but I got to tell you, in the beginning, I didn't get past solid. So uh, anyway, it's been fun. So I think I need to find something else. I've kind of mastered that one. Um, so I think reading keeps us hobbies, volunteering. Okay. Um, and then they say do things that you don't change it up a little bit. So when you put shampoo on to when you're in the shower. Instead of putting to your right hand, into your left hand, put it in your right hand and try it. Or try, try going to somebody's house a different way, using a different set of directions. And the joke for me is that would never work because I can't even get there with a normal mm. set of directions because I have no set of. <laughs> my brain doesn't right. work that way. Right. Um, but try, try changing things up in your life. Mm. Um, while this whole pandemic thing and I was home for a little while, I started making pies. I never made a pie in my life. I've been making two pies a week <laughs> and having fun with it. If um, you have any to give away, I'll, yeah, I'll be okay. to be official taste All right. I've been, I've been making a lot of pies. Oh, I was yeah. bringing them to work. Um, oh, try knitting. Try whatever it is. Try you know what I picked up when I turned 60? Uh, music. Uh, music had never been. I've always listened to music, but I never performed, so I... Basically, I learned how to play guitar and sing, and now I perform. Well, I was performing out before COVID came. Now I haven't done anything for six months, but um, I find that that's been a great way to use my brain. Oh, that's great. Right. That's a lot of learning that is entailed. Right. Right? Okay, um, that's good to hear. Yeah. But to your point, have have something in your life that challenges your thinking. Right. So. Right. And for people that are living at home with dementia, I think living at home is can be very lonely. Right. And if the highlight of your day is Meals on Wheels coming, maybe you should be going to the senior center or yeah. to an adult day health program or moving to an assisted living facility, whatever. But people are, are human beings are social. And if we're not engaged, it's not a healthy thing. Yeah. Well, Beth Cardillo, I want to thank you for coming into the studio today. Uh, this has really been fascinating. I've learned a lot sitting here. I feel much better I'm about so the fact glad. that uh, some of the things that I exhibit uh, where I forget things is not necessarily a fact that I'm losing it, so to speak. Um, but obviously, a very important topic, and I would really encourage our viewers and listeners to Find out more information so that you're able to identify what those early signs might be for yourself or for a loved one or a friend or if you've noticed anything. It's certainly an issue that we all are going to have to deal with, whether it's personal or with other people around us, but there's certainly a lot of information out there. So again, Beth, I want to thank you for coming into Studio 120 today. Uh, this is another show uh, from Westfield Council on Aging Presents, which is a collaborative effort with Tina Gorman, the executive director of the Westfield Senior Center, and Pete Coles, who's the manager and producer of WCPC, Westfield Cable Channel 15. 
I want to also thank Pete Coles, who's in the control room, who does everything to make this show happen and get it programmed on Channel 15. My name is Harry Rock. Thanks for listening in, and we'll see you at the next show. Thanks. Thank you.